So, how are you enjoying General Convention? Oh, it's great. Uh, Laurie, thank you for, for getting me here, actually. It's, um, do you know what? It's really overwhelming what sort of atmosphere there is in the hall. In the Eucharist this morning, there is such faith, there's such love, and uh, frankly, there's such humanity. I know, we laugh together, we cry together. It's very different to General Synod, and I've been really quite overwhelmed, as I say, by, um, the, by the spirit there, but also by the people I've met. I mean, I've had some extraordinary um, conversations just by, as you told me, might happen, um, sitting down next to people and finding I was sitting next to somebody I really needed to meet. So it's been, it's been a real blessing, and I'm only halfway through. Well, what's been your favorite experience so far? Oh, it has to be. Well, apart from the Supreme Court ruling, which you let me know about the moment I, I touched down, but it has to be the election of Bishop Michael uh, yesterday. Um, what a godly man. I'm mean, so thrilled we got a chance to, to hear a little bit from him as he, as he came up to say thank you. He's a, a charismatically magnetic sort of guy, isn't he? He really has a deep faith and a deep wisdom, as, and as, uh, as we know, is a, a man who really champions inclusion, and I think is going to be a real critical player in the next few years across the communion as he uh, witnesses to his brothers and sisters, uh, uh, bishops in the communion, about the importance of a Christ who, who really embraces all. So I'm very, very excited about that. I'm so glad I was there to see that. Well, in, in terms of the Anglican Communion, what are some short-term goals or issues that you see for LGBT people? Gosh, across the Communion, we're such a diverse Communion, aren't we? I mean, here in the States, you've managed to push um, things forward so far that we've got blessings and we're nearly at the point of marriage, and yet in so many of our other uh, countries, we're not even recognized as Christians, and, and it's, it's a matter of life and death, quite literally, for coming out. And so I suppose the first uh, goal has to be that we learn how to support each other as a family and understand how the actions of one part can sadly uh, have quite an impact on others, but also how we can learn from each other. Um, I've been so inspired and, and encouraged just by meeting other LGBT Christians over here uh, and, and learning from the path that they've, they've trod. And I think that's something that we can take back across the communion. And I think the other thing is to have um, that boldness to learn how to speak with grace but with courage into situations and not let fear get the better of us because let's be honest I think there is something about these conversations that that actually keep people um, bound up in, in feeling quite fearful and actually if we can find our voice and speak out we find out that there are millions behind us. Well what are some ways that you think the um, that the Episcopal Church and the Church of England can work together on LGBT concerns? Well, I think we already are, at least, and certainly from, from my experience today, we're, we're, I'm learning so much. I suppose we do have the resources, well, um, across, we're two big Western uh, cultures who can, can help those, particularly in Africa and the poorer countries, uh, move forward. And we also have a strong voice. But more than that, I think you've in the States have modeled what it is to overcome, to be able to, 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 to get your voice and your role in society and in the church understood and embraced. And we in the Church of England are going through a similar process where we're trying to learn how to understand each other, build um, uh, trust together as we overcome differences. And how we can model that across the communion I think is really important. If there's a message um, from LGBT people in the Church of England that they might like to convey to their uh, brothers and sisters in the um, in the Episcopal Church. What, what would that, what would that be? be? It's a good question. I suppose first and foremost, please pray for us because we <laughs> need your help. We really do need your help. I think um, what I've realized is that um, there's a very different way of being church here in the Episcopal Church. Your church polity, if you like, the way you, you, you make decisions in, in, uh, in the convention is very different to the way we do that at home. And I think brokering that understanding is going to be quite key. You, you are a very prophetic voice in the communion. You will take bold steps. And sometimes they're not always understood. And the impact of that uh, back across the communion can, can all, often, I, I fear, foster some misunderstandings about the Episcopal Church. So I think uh, what we need to be asking is for your wisdom and experience to help us, but also to help us understand you better. And that's what me coming over here has been all about, really. Well, if, if there were one experience or feeling um, or just an event or happening at General Convention 
that you plan to take back to the Church of England and convey to our um, LGBT fellow Anglicans, what, what will that be? <laughs> Gosh, one event. I think it's a couple. I think the first and foremost is don't give up. Mm -hmm. You know, keep going. We will overcome. Have faith that God is with us. I think you've modeled that and shown how a, a loving family can come and embrace us and allow us to, uh, to be ourselves and fully present and, and using the gifts that we have. But I also think um, what I've been able to, to see uh, in integrity and indeed what I passionately believe in, that it's all about relationship. We need to learn how to, if you like, almost rise above the anger and pain and, and hurt and frustration that we felt and find a way of, of having a conversation with people who, who disagree with us um, fundamentally. But if we can witness Christ to them and they can see Christ in us, I know that that is the way we move this forward. So if we can find the courage to change the tone, to speak in love, uh, to keep that grace, I know we will find a way of moving forward. And, and that's what I'm taking home from what you've shown us. Well, on behalf of Integrity Houston, we're thrilled to have you here and hope that you will come to see us in Houston one day. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you, Laurie. <laughs> and I'd really love to take this opportunity, if I may, to say many thanks to all of those uh, of you who've helped me to, to get here. It's been an extraordinary experience. I know for me a real life-changing one. I, I've met some great friends who I know will be a great support and source of, of wisdom as we walk through um, the next few months and even years within the Church of England. And I wonder if I may, um, if I could offer up a, a little prayer for, for the uh, LGBT community in, in Houston. Absolutely. Um, uh, if perhaps we could pray together. Um, gracious, loving God, thank you so much for the strength of witness uh, within the LGBT community here in Houston. Um, Father, I thank you for the uh, steadfast uh, witness of those who've been able to keep on keeping on um, in quite desperate circumstances to witness to their faith, to, to, to move forward into all that you have for them. And Lord, I pray you a continued blessing on them. I pray that uh, you would continue to fill every, each and every one of your, um, your children's lives with hope and with love. And Father, that they would all feel part of a family, a, a church family, which wants to fully embrace and, and love them. In your mighty name, amen. Amen.